Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I've completely clickbaited you guys because I said I was going to be talking about SQL versus NoSQL databases. However, if you've watched kind of the first iteration of my systems design videos, you'll know that I really don't like those terms. The reason being that just kind of generalizing about a database based on its query language is stupid. There are plenty of SQL databases that do act a certain way, but there are many other implementations of databases that use SQL that act very differently, and the same goes for databases that don't use SQL as their query language, hence why I don't like the term SQL and NoSQL. What I prefer to use instead is relational and non-relational databases, so let's go ahead and talk about those, discuss the differences, and then move on to subsequent videos where we can look at actual real-world examples of databases. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about relational databases. What are they? Now you definitely may think of a database like MySQL or Postgres when I'm talking about something like relational databases, and if you do, you are correct. However, MySQL and Postgres have other stuff going on between them other than the fact that they just are relational databases, which is why I'm going to keep this video pretty general and then make dedicated videos for each type of database. So what is a relational database? Well, basically, the whole point of these are we have a bunch of different tables where each table represents one type of data model. So let's imagine I'm talking about trains and stations because trains and stations have relationships between them. So as you can see in the trains table, I've got red line, blue line, pink line, and in the stations I've got Broadway, Yankee Stadium, and your mom because I can't resist the low-hanging fruit of making a your mom is getting trained joke. So then, of course, what aspect of this involves relationships? Well, we know that a train can be at multiple stations, and a station can have many trains going to it. And so as a result, what we have here is actually a many-to-many -many relationship. And so that is exemplified by the train stations table. And what we're using are something called foreign IDs. Sorry for the siren, that's just Chicago for you. So we have foreign IDs, and what the, those basically say for us or it creates the relationships between two rows of two different tables. Or they could even be in the same table if we really wanted to. But basically, this row right here is saying uh, train with ID 1 at station ID 1. So it's saying that the red line stops at Broadway. And what this is called is called normalized data. Because for each piece of data that we want to represent, we just put it in our tables once, and then using foreign keys, we can establish relationships between them. In SQL, we could leverage something like the join keyword in order to basically take one of these things, like the red line, and then merge it with keys one, two, and three, based on the fact that these guys are lined up over here. But again, we're not worried about the query languages here. We're more so worried about how data is actually organized. So what are the downsides of relational databases? Well, mainly they just have poor data locality. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine that all three of these tables were in one place. Realistically, those tables are not going to be lined up to one another on disk. You know, they could be here and here and here. And so when I'm actually seeking, I have to go to a bunch of different places on my hard drive. But this is a distributed systems focus, and even more so, a more catastrophic case would be they're on physically different nodes in our cluster. So what that means is we might have to end up using distributed transactions in order to perform writes. Let's say I wanted to add a new train station and you know we know that certain trains go to it. Now I have to write to both the stations table and the train stations table which are on different computers in the same write. And that means that I would have to use something like two-phase commit which is slow. Even if we're not performing writes, if I simply want to perform a join, now I have to read from the trains table, the stations table, and the train stations table. And as a result of that, my reads are going to multiple different systems. That's just a lot of extra latency. And so distributed reads are also going to be slow. So what can we do to actually go ahead and mitigate the cost of having poor data locality? Well, we could organize our data differently so that we have better data locality. And the way we would do that is with a non-relational database. So traditionally, most NoSQL databases are non-relational. However, that's not always the case, which again is why I don't love the term NoSQL. But if you see it, that's probably what they're talking about. So instead of using normalized data, NoSQLized databases use denormalized data, which means that we're keeping our data effectively in something called records, just think of it as a key value store or something similar to that. And as opposed to you know, having relationships where one row can explicitly reference another, we actually keep all of the data that we need in every single record. So imagine that the keys were the train names 
now all of a sudden the values are all of the stations. So that you can see your mom is repeated for the red line, blue line, and brown line because it is a station that all three of those trains go to. So now we do have better data locality, but obviously that has to come at a cost, right? We have repeat data. And so what are the trade-offs of something like this? Well, for starters, we do avoid cross-partition reads, right? Because let's say I wanted to know all of the stations that the red line stops at, it's all stored right together, which is great. However, this comes at a big cost, which is that if I wanted to say, hey, your mom is out of commission for the week, I don't know, maybe uh, she's been having too many trains, then we're going to have to remove that from three places. And that right there might be a distributed transaction in and of itself because all three of those deletes need to go through. So it's important to note that writes can be extremely complicated if you have to modify the same thing in multiple places because the data is denormalized instead of normalized. And then additionally, let's imagine that uh, this contained a bunch of extra data right here. Depending on the type of non-relational database, it's possible that you may have to load all of that other data instead of just the portion that you want. Whereas in SQL, you can typically just grab the rows that you want and any other relationships that you need, you would explicitly use the join keyword to fetch them. The point is that you may have a little bit less flexibility in terms of how much data you have to load and send over the network, but I think there are actually certain databases that will let you make that a little bit more granular so you can send a bit less. So what's our conclusion here? Again, I don't want to basically assume any particular type of locking or database index type usage or replication schemas or anything along those lines because the truth is there are many many different types of relational databases there are many many different types of non-relational databases so even though i could go ahead and say like oh you know generally relational databases use b trees that's not completely true and it would be misleading to say such a thing that's why we're going to go through specific databases so what is the general case where you actually want to be using non-relational databases versus relational ones well when there's non-relational data if your data is all disjoint, right, and I can keep it as separate messages or separate records within a database table and they don't really relate to one another at all, think about like separate, I don't know, Facebook posts. I don't really ever have a relationship from one Facebook post to another Facebook post. They're completely separate, different users post them at different times and things like that. And so they're good to just be their own tables. At the same time, if I wanted to basically represent a relationship in my data, let's say we've got a bunch of different books, right? And each book could be pointing to a separate author, author one or author two. That's a good example where you may want to use a relational database because we have data that is naturally well represented by relationships. So of course, when choosing a database, you need to really think clearly about how the organization of your data is going to look. And then making that decision between a relational or a non-relational database is oftentimes going to be the first decision that you need to make. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, have a good week.